Next week we have our first quiz, which is on Tutorial 1. As I discussed in the syllabus and during our first class, you are able to bring the quick reference guide with you to the quiz. I passed out copies of the quick reference guide last time, but if you have misplaced yours, you do need to uh, make another copy with your own um, resources to bring that to the quiz. You're also welcome to write in the blank areas of the quick reference guide. There's some room down here at the bottom as well as some room on the second page. But you could not bring uh, pages in excess of this. So as we discussed um, when we went over the syllabus throughout the class, the intention is that you will be creating your own quick reference guide to help you with tags and syntax and just um, being sort of your own little guidebook to help you with the HTML instead of having to go through the text. For the first quiz, I have created the quick reference guide for you just to give you an idea of how helpful these can be and sort of a starting point. But after quiz one, I do expect you to start making your own. So we have the quick reference guide, which I've gone through tutorial one on this and included all of the tags that were there. I also want to talk about the type of questions that you will see. We will have uh, approximately 20 questions. They will be multiple choice. I like to give quizzes either at the end of the class session or before the break, depending on how things are going with timing and whatnot. Uh, and this is because it avoids the um, awkward situation if we were to have this during, during a class period, not before a break, when some students are um, taking longer than others and we're all just sort of looking around, staring at them, waiting for them to finish up, which then creates more anxiety for that individual student. Uh, and in this way, you know, if you were finished with the quiz, you could could leave either for the break or for the end of the class. Uh, but we'll have those 20 questions, a multiple choice format, and questions could be either based on terminology or syntax. I want to go ahead and show you some sample questions. These two are sample terminology questions. Obviously, these would be multiple choice questions, and there would be choices given, but I just wanted to provide an example of uh, what we were talking about as far as a terminology question. We could also have questions that were syntax-related questions, and for this one, I did include a few examples. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and minimize this and I'm just going to go through the material from the publisher's PowerPoints as well as the textbook. I've got them both open here and just review some of the content and things that we talked about last week. I don't usually go into this much in-depth review for the quizzes in the future, but since this is our first one, we'll go ahead and proceed this way. So the first thing we talked about, sorry, I'm going to have to get used to making sure I'm clicking in the right window here. Um, the first thing that we talked about was the history of the Internet. We talked about the versions of HTML and the fact that after HTML4, we had a variation of HTML called XHTML. So we had XHTML 1.0. And that was in 1999. Things did happen after that. Uh, there was actually a move for a XHTML 2.0, which sort of evolved into what we're using now, HTML5. Uh, HTML5 is, current, is proposed to be the current standard, but the current standard right now is still XHTML 1.0. So we discussed that. We also discussed what a tag is. The idea that HTML is called hypertext markup language, which means that we are marking up the, uh, 
text or the content of our page with tags to indicate how we want that content to be formatted. We talked about uh, saving our files with that HTML extension in Notepad, opening up a file in Notepad and uh, a web browser and saving and refreshing. And we also started to create a variety of tags. This is the discussion of that terminology, the tags and wickets and uh, closing switch. And this was our basic framework. We knew, sorry about this, I'm going to have to thought that it would be better to have the two visualizations going on at the same time, but it's a little bit hard for me to keep up with the, the scrolling. Um, okay, so this basic framework is how we start each HTML page. This is something that we should uh, memorize, and then we, although it's also on our, on our quick reference guide, um, then we have our doc type declaration. The doc type declaration specifies the particular version. As we were discussing earlier, I could be writing in XHTML 1.0 or HTML4 or HTML5. And this doc type declaration specifies the particular version. We started adding tags. We looked first at tags that would be added through the head section, like the title tag and the meta tag. The title tag showing up actually here in a web browser, whereas the meta tag was something that a spider or bot would use uh, for search engine indexing. So we talked about that. We did some examples. We could go onto Blackboard and look at the sample 1.html file that we created. I roughly followed the example in the book, but we sort of created our own page. This just goes through the saving and refresh, which we know that we did last time. And after the head section, we went into some other tags, tags to actually see content in the, the page itself. So the next thing that appears in the textbook within the body section, let me go ahead and scroll down, are the, the comment tag. This is for documentation in order to help the human know what was going on with that code in case somebody else had to come back and edit later. Or we also talked about during development commenting out code just to uh, check validation of other purposes. But on a published page, really comments are just used for documentation. We looked at some other tags specifically the heading tags. Uh, we talked about the fact that there were six levels of headings, one through six, and they all became less dominant or smaller as we proceeded down the, the list. We looked at the paragraph tag, which just brings us to a new uh, separate paragraph of text, which we did here in order to split uh, items into multiple paragraphs. We looked at modifications to formatting using strong for bold and uh, em for italics. We discussed why we should really use strong for bold and EM for italics rather than using the B tag or the I tag, which some people might have used prior to the class. And we can discuss that a little bit more later in the semester. But for now, we should be looking at strong for bold and EM for italics. We also talked about displaying special characters. If I wanted to actually display a wicket on a page or the copyright symbol, what I would actually write inside my tag is either the at sign and the 
named reference for the symbol followed by the semicolon or a numerical character reference. On the quick reference guide, you'll see the second page of this is dedicated to all of the special characters. This is actually one section you'll probably want to delete or reduce as you create your own quick reference guide because some of these you might imagine yourself um, never, if, if very rarely ever using. So you might want to, it's a, a good area to get more space out of your quick reference guide. But that is how we would add a special character. And there's a discussion on this in the textbook as well. This is, I believe we're on page 23 now in the text. Yep. Great. We just talked about the image element in our last video. Both the types of images, the GIF, JPEG, and PNG, as well as using the attributes for source, alternative text, width, height, as well as the title tag. And we talked about storing our images in an images folder. get past the image discussion. Oh, this was what I was showing you during that last video. Using the properties, just right-clicking on an image file and using the properties window to find the width and height as well as the full file name and extension to place that in our website. So the next thing that the, the text talks about are lists. You should know the difference between an ordered list, an unordered list, and a definition list. And have an idea of when you would use each type of list. For instance, the ordered list uses numbers. So we're going to think about an ordered list when there's some sort of hierarchy or steps to the information. For instance, um, directions, you know, one, taking a certain highway, two, getting off at a particular exit. Uh, we'd want to use an unordered list when we have uh, information that, that doesn't have that priority. It's just bulleted, and typically on an unordered list, all of the information on the list has the same priority. For instance, in the slide, they use genres of music, you know, where one isn't necessarily better than the other, so they've just listed them with the bulleted list. You should be familiar with that. Uh, also, with how to create a nested list, and a nested list is a list within uh, the other, within another list. So we did one of those in the review exercise, and I know um, that's typically an area where people have trouble. Let me go ahead and get to the example. Here we have a nested list right here. I'll go ahead and bring the slides over to that page as well. And you can see that what happens is when we actually start this line item, the LI for fruit, it does not close until after apricots. We start this LI for fruit, and it closes after this entire nested list. Nests can be a little tricky, especially when you're doing a nested list. And that's why, sorry, I meant to say list could be tricky. Um, that's why I like to write the opening and closing tag first, and then the content, so you don't later forget to write your content. Let's get to the next topic after the list, because we know, of course, the syntax for the definition list is a little bit different, but... Uh, or sorry, description list is a little bit different, but generally these are following the same procedures. We talked about the break, which is BR, is the tag for um, skipping a line, adding an extra white space. It just helps with readability. For instance, here's somebody's address, and it's just adding a little bit of readability to it to have all of those on new lines. Um, you could put them in new paragraph tags, but if we don't want that same spacing, we just want to go to the next line and not have um, that additional space, that's a time when we would use the BR element, and it's BR 
and then my closing switch. So this is one of those tags, like the image tag, that opens and closes within the same tag. While all of these other tags we've been looking at, the ordered list, the OL, UL for unordered list, the P for paragraph, our headings, uh, all of those were having have it, had separate open and closing tags. But the BR, the image tag, the meta tags, so are examples of when the tags have opened and closed within the same tag. Uh, and speaking of the metadata, we see the syntax for that next. And the metadata syntax is the same regardless of whether or not you're using keywords or description. It's just that the keywords allow you to type individual words separated by commas, while description allows you to type a full sentence description um, through the, the tag there. The next thing we looked at was validation. And we went to the W3C. Remember that W3C stands for a World Wide Web Consortium. This is the organization that holds these standards um, for, uh, you know, our syntactical standards based on the version that we've used. And that's why it was so important to use that doc type declaration. We go to the W3C validation page and we validate our code to make sure that it is consistent with the current standards for you know, the, the particular version that we're using. So we went ahead and tried that. And this is a good time to remind people that, or remind students, excuse me, that you should always validate your uh, validate your code before submitting your homework. Um, obviously, if you got to a problem where it wouldn't validate, you should still submit it, um, you know, as opposed to not turning anything in. But validation is a really easy way to make sure that you don't have common errors. Uh, so you should always do that before you submit your files and all of the examples that I upload to Blackboard, I will definitely make sure that those pass the validator uh, before they're posted as well. So in summary, when we come back next week, we will have a quiz on Tutorial 1. You are able to bring the quick reference guide with you to use on the quiz. You can only use uh, the quick reference guide and any notes that you've written, you know, either here or here, but not on additional pages. So essentially the quick reference guide is one eight and a half by eleven double-sided sheet. We shouldn't have additional, you know, flaps that fold up with additional content or anything like that. It should be a flat sheet, but you can write additional notes on here if you feel like that would be beneficial or you could come with the quick reference guide, you know, right as it comes out of the printer. If you've lost the quick reference guide that I gave you in class, you should uh, take control of printing out a new copy uh, for next week for the, the quiz. We're looking at about 20 multiple choice questions that will vary from terminology-based questions to syntax questions, and they will all be on tutorial one in the textbook.